Okay, let's talk about the NES Middle and Early Secondary Math Exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for this exam, which is um, awesome. Uh, NES stands for National Evaluation Series, and uh, several states use uh, the NES uh, test as their teacher certification exams. There's other states like California, Texas, Florida, for example, that have their own teacher certification exams, and then some states use uh, praxis tests as their teacher certification exams. Again, it all depends on what state you're in, but obviously if you're watching this video, you're in a state that uh, uses the NES uh, test as their teacher certification exam. So that is excellent. So what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at a math problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the math that's going to be on the NES middle and early secondary math exam. So we're going to go ahead and get to that in a second. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last several years, I've constructed many, many online math classes to include an NES middle and early secondary math um, exam test prep course. So I'm going to leave a link to that course in the description of this video. But um, I will char characterize the math that is on uh, this exam as being much more than just middle school math or early secondary math, okay? Oftentimes it's deceiving, you know, in terms of teacher certification exams. Uh, if it's like an elementary level, you know, certification exam, uh, people might think, oh, I'm only going to have to know elementary level math. Now, that's not the case. You really have to take a good look at what's on uh, these exams, but I would characterize uh, the math that's on uh, this exam as kind of like advanced high school level math. So you ask, you're going to have to know the basic stuff, but you're also going to have to know some advanced stuff, which would include, you know, like logarithms, trigonometry, you know, uh, there's a lot of material. So really, uh, it's a good spectrum, you know, from early secondary, middle school math, all the way on up to advanced high school level math. It's, it's covering a lot of stuff. So you really have to uh, be prepared for this exam, okay, to do well on it. But let's go ahead and get to this problem. Uh, the way I like to do these little uh, videos, if you will, is to explain the problem and then uh, encourage you out there that can do the problem to pause the video and do so. But I'm going to give you a hint here in a second. So if you don't want to hear the hint, obviously pause the video, and then, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and solve it. Okay, so for those of you who can do the problem, uh, well, first of all, let me just explain the problem, right? So we have something going on here, right? So if I, if you saw this, I want you to simplify it. So you have something, uh, and we're, we're, we're taking the difference of two different things. So I'm using, you know, I'm, I'm purposely being a little bit vague because I don't want to kind of give this away. All right, but let me give you a little bit more specifics in here. I have two matrices, okay? I have a one matrix, I have another matrix, so I'd like you to perform these uh, matrix operations and simplify this, okay? So in other words, you're going to have to know what to do in terms of matrices. All right, so that's basically the problem. So those of you who now get it, go ahead and pause the video and do so. All right, now here comes the hint. Now, uh, I told you that we were dealing with a matrix, okay? So uh, obviously, a matrix is a way to organize information by rows and columns. So when we're dealing with matrices, you know, there's a lot we learn about uh, matrices. Uh, and uh, basically, well, let's just kind of do it like this. To recognize a matrix real quick, uh, we have these little brackets like so, okay? This is different than this, okay? This right here, these things here can mean find the determinant or uh, absolute value. So very, you have to really know notation. All right, so when you're dealing with matrices, probably one of the most common, definitely the most common ways is this. You have to know what you're dealing with, these, these type of brackets. And these guys in here, if I just write some numbers here, are the entries of this uh, matrix. Okay, and this is a two-by-two two, uh, matrix. But when we're dealing with a, a matrix, uh, you know, in the world of matrices, there's different things that we're going to need to know how to do, okay? We first need to know um, various matrix operations, okay? What can we do with matrices? Well, you can add them, you can subtract them, you can multiply, and there is kind of a, a form of division, and you can find the determinant of them, and et cetera. I can kind of go down a whole, I could spend hours and hours talking about matrices because they're hugely, hugely important in mathematics. 
But, uh, you know, uh, just by virtue of you watching this video and you taking this test, somewhere along the line, you've dealt with matrices. I'm sure you have. Just, you know, you may not remember uh, quite exactly, uh, you know, what to do. All right, but I'm going to, you know, um, obviously uh, solve this problem. I'm going to do it now. So my hint is just to try to refresh your memory on what uh, a matrix is or matrices, you know, are and what we do with them. So let's go ahead and get to it now. All right, so here I have A times this matrix. This is an example of something that we're going to have to use what we call scalar multiplication. All right, so when we're dealing with matrices, we have something called scalar Hopefully I didn't misspell that. Scalar multiplication. Then we have regular matrix multiplication, which in and of itself is a whole you know, lesson. Okay, there's a, this is can get quite involved, and you cannot multiply every matrix. Uh, you just can't take any two matrices. Uh, they got to have to meet uh, two, certain conditions in order to to find a product of matrices. To find a product of two matrices. Okay, so scalar multiplication is different than matrix multiplication. So uh, scalar multiplication is simply a uh, distributive property type of problem. So what we're going to do is take this A and multiply it by all the four entries of this matrix. So let's go ahead and do that now. And when you're dealing with matrices, I could just tell you right now, it is super, super, super easy to make a mistake. So you got to go super slow. Well, not super slow, <laughs> not like slow motion slow, but you have to be very diligent and check your work because you got to be on high alert for making a mistake. All right, so A times X is, let's go ahead and just write that as AX. A times negative Y, we'll write that as negative AY or YA. It doesn't make a difference. I'll leave the A uh, in front. And then we have here uh, A times 4. Here I'll actually write it as 4A. And then A times Z, uh, let's write this as ZA. Okay, so again, you can write this as AZ. But here, obviously, when we're dealing with a uh, coefficient, you always want to have the variable, uh, variable behind it. So this is the result of doing this scalar multiplication. You just simply just take this value or this variable and multiply it by the entries. Okay, now here, I have to figure out what am I going to do with this? I'm, I'm taking the, I'm, I'm subtracting one matrix from another. So the way you want to deal with this is turn this into a multiplication problem. I'm sorry, an addition problem. So just as you do, like, say, 6 minus 10, this is equivalent to 6 plus a negative 10. So what we're going to do is take this. Let me just erase this again. So I'm going to take this difference, this subtraction operator, and make it a, an addition operator, and then I'm going to distribute that negative um, uh, negative one, technically speaking, to each one of the entries here. Okay, so uh, this becomes all right. I'm just going to take the opposite of each one of these entries. So this is going to be a negative times a negative three. So this is a positive three. This becomes a negative y. This becomes a negative six, and this becomes a negative z squared. Okay. All right, so hopefully I didn't confuse anybody out there too much with that. So now we're at this point of the problem. So I'm going to add two matrices. You can add or subtract two matrices if they have the exact same size, okay, what we call order or dimension. All right, so this is a two-by-two two, uh, matrix, two rows, two columns. This is also a two-by-two two matrix. So we can find the sum of these two matrices, and the way we do this is simply add the um, respective um, entries, okay? So this is uh, our first row, first column. This is our first row, first column. So here is our first row, first column. So we'll go ahead and add this up. So let's go ahead and do it this way, 3 plus AX, okay? That's it, right? So this is going to be our answer here uh, for that part of uh, this entry in the, the solution. So now let's go ahead and do... Uh, uh, row one, column two, so that'll be right here, okay? So this would be a, let's write it this way, negative y minus a y, all right? So we gotta be careful, negative a y minus a y, or plus negative a y, however you wanna write it, that's fine as well. 
So now we'll just go ahead and continue on. We have 4a and negative 6, and that's going to be in what position? It's going to be in this position right here, right? So that's going to be second row, first column. So this will be 4a minus 6 or plus negative 6. And then last but not least, we have row 2, column 2, and that will be ZA and this negative Z squared. So we'll write it this way, uh, negative Z squared plus ZA. Um, and again, you don't, we can have the orders flipped. They're both uh, mathematically, mathematically equivalent. And this is the sum, okay, of, uh, or this is, this right here, simplified, is this okay that's what we wanted to do right so we have to first obviously do our scalar multiplication which we did and then we're going to go ahead and add the matrices very much like the order of operations when you have uh you know you have to follow a certain course of action but you know the this is a pretty easy problem in terms of you know high school level math at least it should be all right uh, I didn't give you a problem on how to multiply two matrices, but of course I could have, right? But <laughs> that's for another video. But um, again, you can add or subtract uh, any matrices as long as they have the same size, same dimension. Uh, in, other, in other words, for another, another, other words for size, excuse me, are dimensions and order. Okay, so if you got this problem right without any hint or anything like that, that's excellent. Okay, good job, right? But it by no means, obviously, does this cover all the topics that you can encounter, all the math topics that you can encounter on this particular exam. Uh, if you're able to do this with a bit of a hint, that's uh, awesome as well. Uh, if you were totally lost and struggled, don't panic. Use it as feedback. You can certainly do a lot uh, with your math skills if you just get into the right mindset and a good study program. Okay, so, and this is just one topic. You don't have to ace every single topic, but, you know, matrices are a pretty big topic in math. So hopefully, you know, you can't be, you know, clueless about matrices. All right, this video is not intended to be about just, you know, uh, a discussion on matrices. It's to help you out on the NES middle and early secondary math exam. But, uh, you know, uh, if you're going to be strong and well prepared for, you know, high school level, advanced high school level math, matrices are a huge part uh, of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my NES uh, middle and early secondary um, math test prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Super comprehensive. So if you don't have a good study plan right now, my course can help uh, help you organize and really learn a wide range of all these math topics. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for a good 12 years at the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you prepare, and I'm posting uh, new stuff all the time that can help you out. So hopefully you'll consider becoming a subscriber. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate it. A thumbs up and leave me some feedback. You know, what's your background? Uh, are you going from high school uh, to college to teaching? Meaning that you probably are in your early 20s. <laughs> I'm just taking a guess. Maybe you're 22. Boy, I wish I was uh, 22. That's several decades uh, for me ago. <laughs> but maybe you are, um, are like a retired military. Maybe you're switching careers. You know, uh, you were doing something else for 15 years and you decided you want to become a teacher. So there are a lot of different ways to become a teacher. And it's 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 cool, you know, uh, I think these days you just... And by the way, this doesn't minimize those of you out there that are gone from high school to uh, college to teaching because that really shows that you've had a, a early passion to want to teach, okay? People just don't become teachers just to become teachers, especially at a young age. You know, you're motivated because you really want to do this, and that's that's awesome because we need that kind of uh, motivation and energy in the classroom. But, you know, sometimes it takes years, you know, um, of, uh, you know, doing another career. We figure out, you know what, I want to do something else in my life. I want to teach. And then those of you end up, you know, preparing to become a teacher. But either way, you know, half of being a teacher is getting through all these certifications and getting our degrees and all this professional, you know, development, et cetera. But, you know, when I'm making these teacher videos, I always stress to you that, hey, that's only half of being a teacher. The other half, the more probably the most important half is actually learning how to deal with students, teachers, you know, fellow teachers, parents, administration, all the things that, 
you know, are going to challenge you every day, you know, um, you know, the actual execution of teaching whatever subject you're going to be teaching. So um, that's where the real fun begins. And that kind of education, you just have to gain through experience. So don't, you know, I think you just have the expectation that it's going to take you time more than a year, you know, more than two years, more than three, you know, it, it takes time to develop this experience and really fall into your own. Uh, so don't judge uh, your teaching career by your first year. I would say stick with it. You've done a lot of already a lot of hard work to get to this point. Stick with it in the best way um, you can really, you know, uh, gain experience quickly too is to latch on to those awesome veteran teachers that have been doing this 20, 30 years that, you know, are like a gold mine of information. Latch on to them, learn from them. You don't have to be exactly like them. You can have two teachers, experienced teachers, completely different personalities, completely different teaching styles, both highly effective, both loved by their students. Um, so, you know, learn from anyone who's been doing this for a long time that's successful. Learn what you can from them until you find your own way. And that's the awesome thing about teaching is you'll develop your own style uh, you know, your own unique teaching style, but it takes time and experience. But first things first, first thing is you got to get through the math on this particular exam of which I know you can just got to study hard and remain focused. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best, uh, and thank you for your time and have a great day.